Discoveries in Human Evolution, 2022. Cooking Fish. Teeth of a species of carp were subjected to temperatures required to cook fish, but not as hot as temperatures directly inside a fire would be. This indicates the fish were placed above or next to the fire for cooking rather than being discarded in the fire or burned accidentally. Of course, what good is barbecue without a tasty beverage to wash it down? Published in December 2021, after last year's post was written, a team led by Jajing Wang from Dartmouth University uncovered the oldest known beer production in the world in Egypt. Made of fermented grains, the production of beer is closely linked to the emergence and spread of agricultural societies. Dating to 5,800 years ago, hundreds of years before Egypt's first pharaoh, this beer was thick like a porridge rather than watery and probably used for both daily consumption and ritual purposes. Animal Friends, and Animal Food, Origins of Domestication and Cooperation Whether for work, companionship, or food, modern human existence would not be possible without domesticated animals. But do human impacts on animal communities in a broader sense date back far earlier than evidence for domestication? In July, a team led by Danielle Fraser from the Canadian Museum of Nature quantified species evenness in North America over the past 20,000 years, and found that there were two pulses of diversity decrease among animal communities, the first around 10,000 years ago associated with the North American megafauna extinction, and another around 2,000 years ago during a period in which agriculture spread rapidly and population sizes boomed. This study demonstrates that humans can affect, and have affected, animal communities in indirect ways in addition to hunting and domestication. When it comes to domesticated animals, perhaps none captures the imagination and our emotions like, humankind's best friend, the dog. Dogs are also currently the earliest known domesticated animal on Earth. A June study led by Anders Bergström and Pontus Skoglund of the Francis Crick Institute looked at genomes of ancient wolves, from whom our species domesticated the modern dog, to try and determine where and when the connection between humans and dogs began. They found that ancient wolf populations in North America, Europe, and Siberia were interconnected with each other in the past rather than being separate populations like today, and that all dogs included in the study are most closely related to wolves from eastern Eurasia than western Eurasia. However, Dogs originating from the Near East and Africa have significant contributions to their genomes from ancient wolves in southwest Eurasia, either indicating a separate domestication process or, more likely, interbreeding with that additional wolf population early in the domestication process just how early members of our own species interbred with Neanderthals when we first left Africa. While this study points strongly to eastern Eurasia as the geographic source of modern dogs, none of the ancient wolf populations studied were the direct ancestor of modern dogs, meaning that the true dog ancestor or ancestors remains to be found. In addition to companionship, humans also domesticated animals for food and to assist with work. Another study in June led by Joris Peters from Ludwig Maximilian University Munich and Gregor Larsen from University of Oxford traced the origin of chicken domestication to around 1650 BCE in Thailand, corresponding to the spread of grains, specifically rice and millet. Chickens then appear to follow the grains as they spread around the world as a food source. Clearly, modern humans owe a lot to our animal friends and new finds continue to shed light on where, when, and how these interspecies interactions first emerged. France. First Neanderthals were there, then modern humans, then Neanderthals again before modern humans became the only harmonin in Europe. From both lithic and fossil evidence, this modern human occupation dates to older than 50,000 years ago, almost 10,000 years older than the previous record for modern humans in this region. This evidence tells us that not only did Neanderthals and modern humans live in the same area for a long span of time, potentially implying that our presence in Europe did not drive Neanderthals to extinction, but also that these two species occupied the same site alternately. This extended time span of interaction could have implications for genetics as well, potentially adding another data point to the where and when of modern human Neanderthal interbreeding. Called CD33 allows modern humans to prevent some side effects of aging, specifically protecting the brain from inflammation and dementia. The gene for these CD33 receptors is not present in Neanderthals or Denisovans, meaning that it could be one advantage our species had over them, but it also means we had to have acquired it on our own rather than inheriting the gene from a common ancestor. One hypothesis this study explored comes from reproductive health the idea that we evolved these receptors to fight gonorrhea bacteria. 
The bacterium coats itself in sugars to mimic the human body, and our version of the CD33 receptors can effectively fight it, sparing our reproductive health. This potentially indicates that this adaptation to reproductive health could have been co-opted by the human body to allow for longer lifespans. In other words, we evolved the CD33 receptors to fight gonorrhea, and as a result our bodies could fight against dementia and allow us to have grandparents. Ancient DNA a new Nobel laureate While there have been important strides made in genetics and human evolution in the past year, the most notable achievement must go to a new Nobel laureate, Svant Pabo. Born in Sweden in 1955, Pabo has long been a leader in the field of ADNA, especially when it comes to humans and our closest relatives. In 2010, Pabo's team deciphered the Neanderthal genome, unlocking a whole new realm of anthropological insight. Pabo has also been at the forefront of new discoveries in anthropology, including identifying the Denisovans and understanding the genetic relationships between Denisovans, Neanderthals, and our own species, as well as identifying the first early human Neanderthal Denisovan hybrid. For these reasons and more, Pabo was awarded the 2022 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine, rounding out 2022 with a fantastic close. Congratulations.